Okay, Jariah, I'm going to hit record and we're going to do a an abbreviated lesson here because we've got to get caught up. Can you see my screen? Here for here. All right. Okay, so morning, morning. We are here. Where are we at? We're here right here in module 10 this week, week, week 10, um, the week of November the 9th. So today is the 12th, do you believe it? So a couple of things I want to go over. Today is going to be a review day for the AP Style Guide. And we're going to go over that in just a second. But if you see right here, we're going to make another announcement that we have um, an AP Style Quiz. And this is quiz number two. And this is going to be due on Sunday. What's Sunday's date? I think it's the 15th. Yes, Sunday the 15th. November the 15th. And everything is due at the end of the evening, 11.59 p.m. Okay, so once again, to those who are watching the AP Style Guide quiz, quiz two is found right here. Won't click on it but it's found right here you know you can download it and type in it or whatever and then upload it with your answers by Sunday the 15th of November 11:59 p.m. so um let's see today we want to let's go back to our home page and we want to go right here to syllabus and resources so those people who are watching i want you later to go back to syllabus and resources um next week we're going to start talking about our next story which is going to be our final story but i want to make an announcement to those people who have not yet turned in the midterm story you guys are are, are falling behind and i really need you guys to uh pick up so we can't get to the last story if you guys didn't do the first one so to those folks who are watching, I really need you to um, pick up the pace. It's November, uh, almost the middle of November, and we're going to be finished with this semester in, oh, oh boy, just a few weeks uh, when you think about it. So please make sure that you uh, complete that midterm story if you haven't done so. All right. Also, one more announcement, and I did forget to post this, is um, join us on Facebook tonight on the AMSC page. And um, each each night this week, we've been having at 7 p.m., 7 p.m. Um, on the Facebook page for AMSC, there's going to be a film festival from 7 to about 8, 8.30. And some of the professors will be talking tonight. I'll be on tonight and we'll be talking a little bit more about this term Afrofuturism in uh, some of our favorite shows uh, like Raising Dion, um, See You Tomorrow, Lovecraft Country, uh, Black Panther as well. So if you get a chance, please make sure that you join us tonight on Facebook um, uh, on the AMSC channel page, should I say. All right, everybody, so I want to go back to our AP style guide. You give me just a second. I'm going to pull this up. And um, once again, the AP style guide is something that is needed when you write your um, news stories. So I want to say once again, especially to those who uh, are watching and to our students here, is that you got to make sure that when you write your news stories that you check out your style guide. You got to make sure that you're checking out the style guide because it's not like writing an MLA or APA and things like that. It's going to be a little bit different. And this is a uniform way of how all the journalists write for newspapers or for um, TV news, okay, or for radio news. All right, everybody. So um, we're going to pick up a little bit. Let me actually go back to addresses here. Okay, actually I'm gonna go back to numbers. So let's refresh a little bit. And today we're gonna talk about numbers. We'll do addresses. We have a couple more things to go through. 
All right, so if we are writing numbers in a story, you want to make sure that you spell out numbers um, that are below the number 10. OK, spell out numbers below the number 10. And that can get a little tricky sometimes. Also, you want to spell out numbers if they start a sentence. So look right here. 27 detainees were released yesterday. So the number starts the sentence. We wouldn't put the number 2727. You don't start a sentence. Never start a sentence with a number, OK? Also, you want to spell it out. OK, mm -hmm. this is the spell out section. You want to spell out your numbers. If, excuse me, if you have a large number, OK, that uses a hyphen to connect the word and um, like if it ends in Y to another word like 56. OK, so look right here, 21, 76. So they end in a Y and they need a hyphen right there. So we would spell out that big number. And many times it can get, excuse me, many times writing an AP style can get confusing, even for me. And it's not something that you can always keep in your head because we don't write like this every day. So you go back to your style guide to help you. All right, here's another thing for um, numbers. Uh, or figures uh, 10 and above, you can write those out. OK, if it's somebody's age, always write the number. OK, if it's a percentage, uh, even if it's less than 10, if it was 5%, uh, 1% of the population had COVID-19, you can write that number out. OK, so just hang with me and then we're going to take a look at a couple of examples. You OK there, Jariah? OK. Yeah. Excuse us, Barry. Hey there. Oh, how you doing, Professor? <laughs> hey there, you doing all right? Yes, ma'am. How about yourself? Good. I'm glad you joined in. Let me yes, go. Sorry, I'm late. Oh no, but, you're uh, fine. Um, I was wondering. So you said that we don't spell out the ages; we just put them in numbers. That's correct. That's correct. For yes, ma'am. Any percentage, write it out. Use the figure. And that's um, even if it's less than 10? Even if it's less than 10. So if it Thank was like 5% okay. of the kids caught COVID-19, right? Mm -hmm. You would write 5% sign. OK. Thank you. Mm -hmm, the number five. We're going to do some examples in just a second. I'm going to show you some examples. OK, let's go back over addresses. You're going to abbreviate. Now, here's a tr tricky one, because remember, students, we don't write in my neutral uh, microphone. We don't write in AP style every day. So this is not something that is going to come natural for you. You've got to go back to the style. Guide. So anyway, abbreviate some my mutual microphone. Abbreviate words street, avenue, boulevard, only after numbered addresses. Okay, let me say that again. You're going to abbreviate the word street, avenue, or boulevard. Look at those, just those three. Only after a number address. And okay, so of if we lived on Highland Street, OK, we can abbreviate street and make it a ST, right? If we have the the um the number address. So if I lived at 513 Highland Street, right? I could put the ST, put ST in period. So if it doesn't make sense just yet, don't worry. I'm going to show you some examples. It's just hard for me to write on the screen. <laughs> OK, now look at this. Let me go. Let me go back. Never abbreviate drive, highway, place. What are some other what are some other things that we name us uh, uh, where people live? Drive, highway, place, road. Um, road, there's some other ones way. 
um, court. OK. So if you live on a drive, a highway, a place, a road, a court, OK, you don't have to abbreviate those. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. You can abbreviate your compass directions when you have a numbered address. Isn't this tricky? Abbreviate your compass directions in a numbered address. So watch this. 50, why do they have 50 South Court Street? Look at that. 50 South Court Street. Look at this one right here, y'all. So why did they do that? Why do we have a ST here? It's, is it because um, street, you can abbreviate street? That's right. I can abbreviate street. Look right here. I can abbreviate the word street. So you're right. That's a bingo. And I have the number. See, I have the number. Only oh. have the number that, uh -huh. So you're good to go, but I'm also good to go because I have the number of the house, the house number. You know what I'm saying? Now, look at this one. Look at the second point right here. Abbreviate compass directions in numbered addresses. OK, so I'm still good right here because it's South Court Street, right? So I can do S period court street because I have the numbered address. But what if I didn't know where they lived? What if I didn't know their house number? I don't know. I know they live on South Court Street. So if I don't know the house number, how do we do it? We got to write everything out. Look up here at the top so I can write it all the way out because I I don't have a house number. I don't have the address. OK, so I have to say the suspect lived on South Court Street. Because I don't have a house number, so I got to write everything out. So once again, AP style guide is not going to just come naturally to you. You got <laughs> You got to use those style guide manuals that I gave you in syllabus and resources. Even for myself, it's, it, it can, you know, I remember some of the things, but I still got to go back to my book. All right. How are we doing? All right, we're doing pretty good. So let's look at names of states. We all live in a particular state. We live in Georgia. So let's see what we got to do with a state. We're going to spell out, uh-oh, we're going to spell out names of the states. Watch this. Unless it's preceded by a city, a county, or a military base. OK, so let's go back again. You're going to spell out the name of the state. Spell it all the way out. A Maryland, a Texas, a Georgia, a Oklahoma, Ohio. You're going to spell it all the way out unless you have the city or the county um behind it okay now here's the other tricky part you're going to always 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 spell out any states that have five or fewer letters so um who has five or fewer letters let's think about it what states have five or fewer letters you can google it if you need, <laughs> if you need to Ohio is one. Ohio. Um, Iowa. Iowa. Let's do this. Hold on. OK, you talk. I'm going to type it out. OK, uh, let me see if I'm. Let me come back to you on it. Hey there, Louise, Joseph and Tracy. OK, all right, this is a little bit better. Help me help me uh, visualize. So states with uh, five or fewer. OK, all 
All right, go ahead. You said Ohio and I heard Iowa. Who else? Texas. Who else has five or fewer letters? Um, what about Alaska? No, no, oh, that's sick. Idaho. Idaho, yeah, Idaho. There's somebody else we're missing, I think. Is it Maine? And I'm sure I'm missing somebody, but <laughs> OK, so those are a few with five or fewer. Let me come back to you again. <clears throat> OK, let me come back to our lesson. So remember, if it's five or fewer, OK, we're going to spell it out. And let me get my lesson back up here again. If it's Alaska or Hawaii, they're special. Always spell out Alaska and Hawaii. I don't know why they're special, right? But <laughs> they have what? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they have six. So I don't know why they're so special. But um, Alaska and Hawaii, you're always going to spell those out in states with five or fewer letters, like a Ohio or a Iowa. All right. Um, okay, let me go back here for. Second references, <clears throat> excuse me, you can just abbreviate all the state name. And what I mean by second references, let's say if we mentioned, um, we mentioned Georgia in the, uh, in the first paragraph, and then we mentioned Georgia again, you can abbreviate Georgia in the second time. Okay, Does everybody, that makes sense. So look right here. Let's look right here in our examples. This person says, I lived in Oklahoma. Why did they spell Oklahoma all the way out? It's it's five. I mean, it's a big word. It's a big, big state. Why did they spell Oklahoma all the way out in this example? Look at the first point. Look at the first bullet point. So why did they spell Oklahoma all the way out? Now show up. OK, so we spell Oklahoma all the way out because it didn't have a city next to it. So we could spell Oklahoma all the way out. Now look at this. Second example, I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they they abbreviated Oklahoma, Oklahoma. <laughs> Why? Because now I know where they live. They lived in this city. It was preceded by a city. OK, let's look at this next one. I lived in Iowa. Why did they spell out Iowa? No abbreviation for Iowa. OK, well, you guys are you guys are quiet today. OK, so it's no abbreviation for Iowa because it's what? Oops. Yes, um, five or fewer letters. There you go. It's only four letters to Iowa. I lived in Council Bluffs, Iowa. OK, I've got a city and a state, but I can just keep this one as Iowa four letters <laughs> because I don't need to abbreviate this one any further because it's little. It's five or fewer. OK. 
All right, so don't worry. I'm just, we're going to look over some examples if it gets tricky. And also, if you guys are on your computers, you can open this up on your computer so you can have it for our example in, in just a few minutes. Let's go right here. Let's talk about days and dates, and then we're going to pause, okay? Always use numbers or the numeral without a ST, you know, like people put like first or something, uh, ND or RD or TH. Don't use that in a date. And what I mean by dates, like somebody might say it's April the 1st, right? And they put a one and a ST. Don't do that in a date. Just put April 1. Okay, avoid using, uh oh, sorry, avoid using yesterday today and tomorrow in a story because if you say the president will be out tomorrow at the at the um cemetery or something well what is tomorrow because i'm going to read uh, somebody might be reading that article 10 years from now or a month from now when they don't know what what is tomorrow's date i don't know so you might say he is expected to honor the soldiers on Veterans Day. Okay. If you're going to write about an event, okay, say the president will honor the soldiers on November the 11th. Okay, November and the 11th. Okay, you can use month and a date. But when you have the whole date, like the month, the day, and the year, excuse me, you want to set it off by commas. So you could, oh, excuse me, guys. So look at this example down here. <clears throat> it's just like in school, August 20, and you can you can abbreviate August or, um, you know, whatever the month is, excuse me, 20th, comma, 1964, comma, was the day they had been waiting for, okay? So if you're referring to a, a day, the month, and the year, set it off by commas, okay? All right, everybody, stay with me. Um, give me one second, I'm gonna hit stop share. And then we're gonna go to, let me pull this out. We're gonna go to the AP um, News site is called Associated Press. And if you have it on your, um, if you have your phones or if you have your computer, this is always a helpful website to go to. Hold on, I'm coming back to you. Okay, can you guys see my um, AP news page? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. All right, so we have, this is APnews.com and AP stands for, somebody tell me what AP stands for. Associated Press. All right, and that's what I want you to remember. This is a top news agency. They run it all. So every news station that you watch, including a Fox or a CNN or MSNBC, they pull information from AP. So for example, last week when we were waiting to figure out what was going on with this election, okay, so um, AP called it first. So they uh, will wait until the official news organization um, uh, calls a particular thing. And if you don't see something that hasn't been verified by the AP, it probably is not true, okay? All right, so let's um, let's tap on what do we want to talk about today? Um, uh, so excuse me, Professor. Yes. So is the AP only for um, news agencies here in in the U.S. or is it for the worldwide, uh, you know, journalism? Very good, very good. AP also is worldwide. Um, and let me see here if I can. Click on international news. That's a good, good, good question. 
because they have bureaus all across the world. Um, so I just clicked on something here. That's a good point. So here we have some information that's going on in Nairobi, Kenya and Beirut. So you're right. They have not just offices here in uh, the United States, but also offices all around the world. Okay, good. All right, well, while we're here, let's just click on anything. World leaders talking to Biden about the virus and other issues. All right, so let's look at this article and this is from the Associated Press. And so we're going to take a look at, um, let's look at a couple of things. We're not going to read everything, but they have a million ads on here, right? All right, somebody look right here. Um, the office of South Korean President Moon Jae-in <laughs> said by said Biden during their look at this 14 minute call. OK, that's interesting. So 14 minute call. Why did they put a one in the four and not write out 14? Because the number is bigger than 10, right? There you go. Very good. Let's get some more examples. Let's look for some states. OK, here's some more numbers, y'all. 28,500 US troops. Here's a here's a here's a. Um, a year, excuse me. OK, OK, here's one. To celebrate the 70th anniversary of the country. Now we just talked about that. No about um, using TH and I thought we weren't you weren't supposed to use it here. I'm going to look that up. OK, so we have some more dates. OK, here's another one. Um, Biden speaking to Biden on the phone for about 15 minutes. OK, same thing there. OK. All right, let's go back. Let's go back and see if we can find some top stories in. Um, around here, let's see if we can find some numbers. So we're going to look for numbers. We're going to look for dates. Let's look for addresses. Let's see if we can find anything like that. I know so much is um, so much is about the election. I'm trying to find something different. <laughs> All right, let's see. New device puts music in your head. No headphones required. What is this about? OK, let's see what we can find here. Let's see if we can find anything regarding numbers, addresses, dates. Now, here's something interesting. Did anybody pick this up? It said on Friday it will debut a desktop device that beams sound directly to a listener without the need for headphones. I don't know if I want that. OK. On Friday, that might be a little tricky. They didn't say today or yesterday or whatever, but we don't know exactly when Friday is. It could be, um, do they mean tomorrow? Uh, what Friday? That could be a little tricky for me. OK. Um, I'm going to go to, let's see if we can go to a local news one. I'm going to come back to you. Let's see. You may not be able. Can you, can you guys see my screen that it changed? Maybe not. Yes, ma'am. It's on um, okay. AJC. You see me on the AJC. Very good. All yeah. right. So I want to see if we could find something local that has addresses in it. OK, can you guys see this um, page? And it starts with 
former Georgia veteran home veterans home patient indicted in death of other resident. Yes, ma'am. OK. Isn't this something? OK, all right, so this is a little bit about what we talked about. All right, let's look at this first sentence. A former patient at the Georgia, oh my goodness, at the Georgia War Veterans Home in Milledgeville has been indicted on voluntary and involuntary manslaughter charges in the death of a, oh, of a resident there this year. Oh, that's horrible. OK, in Milledgeville, now, um, AJC might get away with this a little bit, but um, Milledgeville is, of course, a city in Georgia. And they just put Milledgeville, but not Milledgeville, comma, Georgia. OK, but we can right. kind of get that. Yeah, we can kind of get that it's in Georgia because, look, it's they just said earlier. Hello, bless my Georgia. Huh? Hello. Yeah, uh, Professor, it seems like um, the AJC is uh, does a better job at um, going by the standards, I think. It says April 8th instead of the 8th. OK, yeah, let's go down here. Very good. Nice. David Tarpley is accused in Roland, Roland Daigle's death in the nursing home on April 8th. Just an eight, not an eight th. Very good, 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 good. Well, this is awful. I'm sorry I was reading it. Okay. Okay, my goodness. We don't want that to happen to our <laughs> to our veterans. Let's go to another one. Oh, let's talk about weather. See if we can get something else. We have so many different. Hurricane things coming through here, tropical storm, should I say, not a hurricane. OK. Uh, OK, channel two, channel two meteorologists. We don't need to spell out. To here. OK, so this one might this one might be a little tricky because it's more branded, so you wouldn't need to spell out channel TWO. OK. OK, let's look at a couple more examples before we go back. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you all have heard about this, but I don't I don't know this gentleman personally, but I I live not very far from this high school and I know a few friends who knew of this uh, principal, but principal um, of the Westlake High School. This is so, so sad. And his wife, they were vacationing in Puerto Rico. And um, unfortunately, they passed away. Um, the, I think they were in the water and the wife drowned and he went to go save her. And it's just the saddest story ever. They're just so such beautiful people. Um, but anyway, let's look at this. This story has just really rocked me. I saw it yesterday. Um, OK, on Wednesday, the Westlake High School community mourned the loss of principal J uh, Jamar Robinson, um, who died along with his wife during a weekend trip to Puerto Rico. OK, so um, here they did mention the day they didn't say yesterday or whatever so if a person was reading the article they could look at the date and kind of capture when wednesday was um okay puerto rico news report this was just the saddest story mm. okay ages um yeah and please keep their family in prayer look at this the couple's two boys, ages 14 and 15. So any age of a person, um, you're definitely going to write the numbers out. OK, 14 and 15. Um, a year, uh, his wife 
worked at Georgia Perimeter College since 2005. Yeah. We're praying for that family. Let's do one more. It's changed so many of the stories are sad. Two wanted after boyfriend shot during Clayton County custody exchange. Oh my goodness. My goodness, my goodness. Okay, oh, we got some good stuff here. Not a good story, but we got some good examples. Okay, a child custody exchange outside of a Clayton County gas station turns, oh no, turns deadly Monday night when authorities said a man tried to step between tried to step between his girlfriend and the irate father of her children. Oh my goodness. Okay, here's an example. Kevin Spruill, okay? So 30, so what does that tell us? Kevin Spruill, 30. So what's the 30 mean? His age. His age, you separate that by commas, good. Um, was found, oh, was found several gunshot wounds when the police responded. Time, and we didn't get to time yet, but six, uh, colon 45 space PM, P period, M period. Okay, Chevron. Um, here we have another age. Tony Stevenson was 34. Okay. And sometimes I don't see any right now. Sometimes in articles, you will see that they will list where the person lives. So I didn't, I was trying to find an example. Here's somebody's age right here. Uh, oh, hey, 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 we found it right here. Hey, everybody watching? Okay, so on 11, 20, okay. Uh, Clayton County police officers responded to the Chevron within the 200 block of Forest Parkway. Okay, so now we don't have the exact address, right? I know what that is. I know where that is. Oh, you do? Yeah, Forest Parkway. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Be careful, okay? I actually live near Forest Parkway. I'm in Clayton County. <laughs> Mm -hmm. did, you, did you hear about this? No, this is actually my first time hearing about it. Oh. Okay, so look right here, 200 block. Of four. Wait a minute, Forest Park. Is that where the big lots is? No. No. Okay, but we don't have... We have like the 200 block, right? But what if it said the um, the person lived at 210 Forest Parkway? That would be different. So we don't have the exact address. We just kind of know the area. So they could write out Parkway. Um, let me show you one more thing. Um, the person's height, how much they weigh. You write all of that out. Um, height. 160 pounds. Oh, so somebody's still missing. They're still looking for somebody. Okay. You find them. You see them, we'll call. All right, let me come back to you. So those are just some examples, real life examples. Real life examples of AP style. Okay, let me come back to you now. Okay, we did months, we did years. All right. Okay, any um any questions? You guys have any questions on AP style? Okay, so what I want you guys to do, let me go back to your class. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so right here, everybody, we're right here, and those people that are watching the video, we're right here on the style guide review. So I want you to go back to your AP style guide, and you are going to 
Um, I won't open it up because you guys will see it, but you guys are going to work on your style guide quiz. Use your style guide to help you, okay? And your quiz, you can, you know, open it up, download it or whatever. And um, your quiz is going to be due on Sunday night, 1159, okay? So make sure you go right here to syllabus and resources. And you're going to have here's another style guide. It's a it's a little smaller, but this is the one that I was using in class. The AP style guide. The cheat sheet just has more in it and it's just, you know, it's a little bit harder to read. OK, all right, guys, you guys OK? Yes, thank you. All right, so next week we're going to pick back up with um, our book and um, continue to move on. Last week we started writing leads and we talked about the different types of leads. So if you were not able to join us, I do suggest that you go back and watch that video. We talked about hard leads, soft leads. We wrote a couple in class. And so uh, you guys did really good with that. So I hope to see you guys um, next week. Spread the word to your classmates. And uh, I know it's difficult. This online thing is tricky, but I think you guys do really good when when we get online and you know we can talk and ask questions if it's possible with your schedule and also don't forget if you're able and your schedule permits uh join us um on facebook tonight at 7 p.m and uh we'll be having a panel that's going to talk about afro afro futurism um in stories and movies such as uh love lovecraft country uh, Black Panther, I think it's called See You Tomorrow, Raising Dion, and there's there's a, another uh, show that is escaping me right now. But it's going to be really interesting, so I hope to see you guys if you're able. So you said that there were some assignments due today? No. Uh, I thought you, I thought you said, I heard you say assignment was due today earlier. Oh, what I said earlier to other people who are watching that some people have not turned in midterm uh, stories and I implored people uh, that had not turned in their midterm stories to please do so as soon as possible because we're going to start moving into the end of the semester soon. And um, I want you to get want you guys to get that done. But what is due at the end of the week is your quiz. Okay, mm -hmm. so do we have a final exam or is the news story the final? The uh, news story is your final. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I have another question. So for the news story, is there, I can't find a ruby for the news story. So is there, can you tell me what that is? Oh, say it. Say one more time. You couldn't find the, what? The rubric for the news story, the final news story, which is what we're working on, correct? Yes, but I didn't. Um, we I haven't um, uh, announced it yet. So if you go right here, but you can always work on it. So everybody, uh, those people here and um, watching. So if you guys need any resources, you go right here to your page, go to syllabus and resources and the final story directions are here. Your syllabus is here. Your AP style guide is here. Uh, okay. Those people who are behind midterm news story, how to write a lead, all that stuff is here in syllabus and resources. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everybody, and we'll talk more about the final news story next week. Next, oh, next Thursday. What's next Thursday? The 19th? The 19th. All right, you all take care. You too, you have a good one. Okay. Thank you, too. Professor. All right, all right. thank you, Joseph. Stay safe. Yes, ma'am, you too. All right, see you guys. Bye bye. bye, -bye.